Uh, this is what was used to send the com... Oh, okay. Oh, you did it. <laughs> All right. Oh, no. I never turned everything on at the same time. Uh, too much power. I'm here with one of YouTube Engineering's best kept secrets, Mark of the Curious Mark channel, or in your lab. Thank you so much for letting us come poke around. Can you maybe just talk a little bit about your channel and what you do here and what you're excited about? Yeah, electro monkeying is what we do, right? We um, uh, work with vintage electronics, uh, usually of some noble background, and we do restorations. And then at one point, we veered into uh, space stuff. So we have the Apollo. Uh, set up here. We are trying to redo the uh, uh, telecom link from the Apollo missions. Can you show us around kind of what you have? Yeah, so so about? here we, we have the uh, the setup that brought you voice and data and TV from the moon. Uh, and actually, this is the transponder, so that's the main piece of RF equipment that was in the command module. This is the moon side, so we have Mr. <laughs> moon over there. Uh, but it's the exact uh, replica of one that flew. Not only we have that, but we got the test uh, equipment that got with it. So we are just transmitting from Earth over there, uh, which we ha had replicated with uh, HP gear and actually Keysight gear uh, until recently. And then we are going to redo it uh, with the original equipment, which we have uh, over there. But we, we take great care of it, right? So we, we haven't uh, Absolutely. blown up anything so far. <laughs> <laughs> so what do we have going on over here? There's all sorts of clicky, blinky stuff. Yeah, this is my Back to the Future <laughs> <laughs> display. So it started with, uh, I guess, my, my Nixie clock, which is a homemade Nixie clock. And then it, it went down from there. I have an Italian flip clock. Like from a train station? Yes, set? 1957, okay. actually. Uh, we have a space clock. Uh, at least this went from the Ukraine, so it, it uh, kept it turned on. Uh, so this was flew in a Soyuz? This, this was flown, yes. Okay. This is... This is royalty. This is a cesium clock. Oh! This is a, a quantum experiment in a box. So the claim to fame is that we checked uh, Einstein's relativity with it. So that was the experiment where they had two on Earth and they sent one up into orbit for a while. So they, they, they did the both, uh, they did special relativity where they, they flew two of them counterclockwise. Okay. And, and the two clocks were out of sync, right? And then they did general relativity, which is the one where which is due, due to gravitation and, and not speed. They kept one on the ground in LA. They took a plane. They flew as long as they could, as high up as they could, went down, and the two clocks had experienced a different time. And yeah. it was within a, a few percent of what uh, Einstein had predicted. Very cool. Uh, it's the first time it was done. So. So what's going on here? I see some blinky. And yeah, this is a <laughs> piece of uh, IBM test equipment. And this, this was meant to be plugged into a peripheral that doesn't, didn't have its own blinky light panel. Okay. Like a printer or a tape drive or something like that. And then you can debug it you know, at the bit level. Got it. And I, I transformed it into a clock, actually. <laughs> <laughs> so it's running off like an Arduino or something? Uh, yeah, yeah. It's, it's <laughs> testing an Arduino, actually. <laughs> Wonderful. And then over here, speaking of test racks. Yes. Yeah, so this is my little 1960s corner here. And you actually, you're sitting uh, next to the... So the, the star of the show is actually this computer, the 2116, which was HP's first computer. Uh, and you, you can count on the paddles. Uh, it has 16 <laughs> bits and it's core memory. It's Magnetic you know, core memory. Sorry. Magnetic core memory, uh, 1964. And that's basically what started HP and its current comput uh, computing path. But they were very careful to make a computer that fit within their business. Mm. So this is a computer for uh, test instrumentation automation. Okay. And uh, this is actually a typical uh, configuration that it would uh, be sold with, right? So it would have... Here I have a, a digital voltmeter and a digital frequency meter. Uh, we have power supplies uh, that are digitally controlled and uh, you could do a whole automatic uh, acquisition system and uh, those computers were just great at real-time data acquisition. So if you wanted an automated test rack in the late 1960s, this is what you would get essentially? Particularly if you were the government. Okay. And, uh, so you, you see them in all kinds of in installations, you see them in nuclear power plants, you see them a lot in the uh, avionics 
so the, the, the king of data measurement, which you know, still defines key site to this day. Right? Yeah. So, yeah. As much as I'm a sucker for Nixie tube displays, this one over here I drew, drew my attention. Can you tell me kind of what's yeah, going it's, on it's, here? Yeah, it's even clunkier. So this is how you would program it, correct? This is how you send a command to the Apollo spacecraft. This is how you test the system that sends a command to the Apollo okay. uh, spacecraft. Actually, when, uh, when, when it was flying, it was not coming out of this machine. They had another machine to send, to, uh, okay. to send it. But all the commands that the spacecraft is able to receive from the paper tape to test the system. Okay. And it checks with those lights that it actually receives it correctly on Got the it. other end. And you can even introduce errors. There's oh, a, interesting. There's sub bit spoil. So okay. this will spoil your bits. <laughs> <laughs> and make sure it detects errors. Uh, okay. A lot of effort has gone into making right this work. So tell me, tell me a little bit about that. You have a whole crew of, of big brain <laughs> engineers that come in and, and help you work on all this. Right. So, so the, the, the projects we take on are, are, are too large for just one person. Uh, so they are, they are group projects and have brilliant engineers that work in the valley, so people from Google, myself from the uh, fiber optics industry, people that just love engineering, right? Do you do much machining? I see uh, lathe, mill. Y yes, well, I, 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 uh, all these old restorations, uh, it's the, the, the electromechanical part is important, so uh, all, all, as a good restorer, you need to have a mill and a lathe. Yeah, um, looks like fun. And then, as they say, this is where the magic happens? Uh, well, the magic happens a little bit <laughs> everywhere, but this is, yes. Actually, we are in, in the process of uh, reverse engineering one of the Apollo modules. It's not ICs, it's all discrete components. The, the only place where there were ICs in the, uh, the Apollo uh, command modules uh, were in, in the AGC, right, in the, in the computer. Okay. Everything else is discrete electronics. Uh, and this is the RF stuff, and I was surprised to that the RF stuff was all transistorized. Right? This, this is microwave stuff, right? And uh, the, the transponder yeah. is entirely at you no know, 2.1 gigahertz, three transmitters, two receivers, and it's entirely uh, solid state. The design must have uh, started in 1960 something, 62, 60, yeah, That's incredible. 63. And also you'll notice that the connection are not soldered, they are welded. Interesting. And welding is incredibly strong. Okay. Uh, so it's, it's all the vibration and... Yeah, if you, if you try to take the two apart, they won't break at the weld between, mm. they will break at the component, not at, the, not at okay. the weld between the wires. I never thought about welding components before. Yeah, the, uh, the AGC is also entirely welded. Mm. Uh, it's, the ICs are welded to the printed circuit board wow. and the, the back plane is wire wrapped. And those are incredibly reliable techniques. They are more reliable than soldering or, or the soldering that they could do at the time. Yeah, all, all, the, all the leads are really nicely looped around mm -hmm. and everything. The more we open that up, the, the more we realize you know, how far ahead they were. Like the, when uh, you look at, at the RF micro, uh, microwave work or the AGC, right? The AGC seven layer PCBs. Seven. ICs, surface mounted components. That's stuff that you would see in the 1990s. Right. Right. Uh, so, so you say, how, how, how far ahead were they? And you say, well, <laughs> 50 years, right? That's That's incredible. <laughs> yeah, incredible. And, and it's, it's very, very obvious here, right? Well, I'd love to see more. Can you show me what else we have going on out here? Uh, yeah, sure. Is this your TikTok viewing computer? Yes, so, so <laughs> this is also an, an incredible computer. This is the mother of all modern computers. This is Xerox Alto from 1974. You come into your office, grab a cup of coffee, morning, Brad. and a Xerox machine presents your morning mail on a screen. What's the mail this morning? They invented everything. It has the mouse, it has the graphic screen, it has the window environment, it has Ethernet was invented for that machine. Really? Yes. Wow. First Ethernet machine. We had the, the inventors of the internet come over and look at it. Uh, the optical mouse was invented on that machine. And the words and images you see on the screen appear on paper. The laser printer was invented for that machine. 
they, they, they got everything. The word processor was first written uh, by uh, Simoni on that machine, and then he went to Microsoft, made Word. Yeah. Uh, so this one was also like 20 years ahead of its time. Yeah. Uh, well, you restored it at some point? Yeah, we made it uh, completely working. Who, who signed it? Are these the designers? Uh, the, yeah, th those are all the, the, all the designers of the Alto. What, did, how, what was their reaction to seeing, seeing one up and, and running? See, we're all elated and yeah. they say, oh, I did that thing. And, and then, ooh, ooh, ooh. no, we had the inventor of the, of the Ethernet come down here and we were testing it. And he was like, I wrote that program. <laughs> <laughs> so now we're going to move to your vintage music corner. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, yeah, so this is when, when I want to relax. I can you, can you play something for us? Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wonderful. Tell me a little bit about your background. You had a very storied, storied career here in Silicon Valley doing engineering work. Right. So I, actually, it started in the East Coast uh, at, at Bell Labs, uh, doing uh, fiber telecommunications, and I ended up starting my own company. We did the first 10 gigabit uh, Ethernet really? transceivers, and just at the transition where it went from voice circuits to Ethernet circuits. Wow. And that was very successful. That was acquired by Intel, I became an Intel fellow, and I went back to my first love, which is computers, and it, it all went down from there. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Fiber optic communication is, um, is a mixture of optics, micromechanics, microwave, and digital electronics. It's uh, everything. Right. So yeah. we, have, we use a lot of Keysight and HP equipment. Uh, and the collection started by just recuperating some stuff that was from the lab that we're going to toss away say no 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 no, no I'm going to repair <laughs> it give it to me and then um, it, it went down from there too uh, so yes so we have the first uh, HP logic analyzer and you say it, it shows you the old zero and the yeah. little ones in your circuit so it's, it's immensely cute <laughs> uh, and that one uses the first Intel chip oh. the first memory so the Intel first product was a 64 bit memory and uh, it, it uses all, it uses like I think four of those chips to make oh, one sure. frame. Yeah, <laughs> okay. <laughs> so all, all of that, so this has been enabled by, by, by Intel memory. Fascinating. You know, by the first product of Intel. So this is the little audio, a low frequency corner. Uh, you, 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 you need Can you play something for us? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you, okay. if, if, if it hasn't broken since <laughs> last time, because I turned this down. All right, that was the show. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Incredible. Just, it is. Just, this, is, this is what you do when you have lots of equipment, right? <laughs> yeah, what, you, yeah. you make it sing, you make it dance. Yeah. <laughs> make it purr. But that's basically how the collection started with the, uh, actually I still have the oscilloscope from uh, the, the, the company, right? So this, this yeah. was the first 10 gig scope I saw at Bell Labs. Okay. And they were, so I bought it back when I started my company <laughs> because we were going to do 10 gig and then they, um, they were going to toss it out. Oh. <laughs> I said, no, 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 you can't do that. We'll I'll, get, I'll get it. And, <laughs> and then um, it, went, it went from bad to worse. Now they have the UXRs at 110 gigahertz, so. <laughs> yeah, we, and, uh, yeah, and we have to buy them from you. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. I know. <laughs> do, you so want to, do you want to do the yeah. computers? Yeah, computers. This is an iconic computer from uh, the 1960s, uh, 19, introduced 1964. Actually, they used that uh, on the ground to go to the moon, right? That okay. was the one that was, uh, they, they, they had versions of this one. Uh, and this is our next big project. We are trying to restore it. There is no 36050 alive really? that we can tell. Uh, so this would be one of a kind if you were able to turn it back on. That would be one of a kind. We, uh, Ken Sheriff, which, which can reverse engineer everything, has reverse engineered the inner working of the processor. So he has already a working emulation of, uh, so this is all micro-coded machine. Okay. Uh, so you can, so they are higher level emulations, but they won't work for the panel. You Got need it. the micro-code version and we have that. Oh. So 
we were very busy reproducing the lights and uh, we're, we're just working on, on this panel, but it's Whoa. just a magnificent beast. Yeah. Look at that. So this is essentially a logic analyzer that's hooked up permanently to your machine. Okay. Right. And the user will only start the machine over here. You, you input your start address of whatever devices, yeah, this is your boot device. Most of the rest, that's for the uh, IBM engineer because the machine was so freaking complicated. Okay. Uh, it was, it would fail, right? And yeah. then you had to figure out at which part of this immense machine mm. was there a problem. And then you have a look, basically if there is a flip-flop in the machine, it's on one of those lights. And since wow. there's only 200 or 300 lights over here, that's not enough for everything. They have rollers and it changes the meaning of the lights. Just multiplex then. Right, and then you, you can, here are your uh, data bits and here's your address bits. Okay, so and you type in your address and you type in your data and then... Right, so you, you can, exactly, so you, you, it's, it, it's, it's like your like microprocessor, microprocessor kits from afterwards, right? Yeah. So you type your bit in and you can change the location in memory, uh, but it's better than that, you can do, uh, you can do breakpoints. Oh. So it's your GDB, right? It's yeah. A, you can do breakpoints, you can single step the machine, you can micro step the machine, you can change the voltages on the uh, on, on, on of the supplies wow. there's a, a there's a whole margining thing yeah. and then you would find where a component is broken or not quite so if you have something intermittent you make it more permanent by okay. detuning the voltage uh, you can check your memory over here uh, so we'll see some of this on your channel in the future is what you're saying yes so this is this 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 was going to be my retirement project <laughs> <laughs> this is this is going to take a while <laughs> and th is this kind of what kicked off the channel or how did you get started doing doing youtube in general uh so i started uh, i started youtube uh with videos when i was building my r2d2 open there you go thank you r2 then when I started to repair the H collect the HP equipment and somehow they became popular, I understand why, because it teaches you electrical engineering on a piece of machine that's out of this world, right? Yeah. So you learn circuit and all kind of things in, in a very enter entertaining way. And then eventually the video kind of became the point of making the restoration. Mm. We're going to take this machine apart and my channel goes behind the t tear down, right? So not yeah. only we are going to tear it down, but we are going to understand it, repair it, and then use it. A lot of engineers start to focus in on a specific mm -hmm. technology, but I find with your channel, it's a bit of everything. Right. Every, every instrument is its own little master class. In exactly. Design. So you learn so much uh, by repairing those instruments. My videos do require some effort yeah. on, on the part of the viewer. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's not just, oh, let's open this thing. Oh, look, it's beautiful. Let's break it more. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's safe to say no one else anywhere has a lab quite like this. Thank you for giving us a tour and letting us in your house. You're welcome. And uh, thanks for letting us some of the uh, Keysight equipment. It's very helpful in our restorations. Absolutely. Stay tuned for the next episode. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much. Appreciate thanks. it. All right.